Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Roseborough. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. Now, we've recently talked about glow-in-the-dark Christians. And one of the things that comes up as a thing in the charismatic movement as well as the NAR is, how come that guy glows in the dark and can operate in signs and wonders and miracles and thingies and me, little old me, I, I can't seem to operate in the higher level gifts. I can't even light a match, uh, let alone glow in the dark. You, you get the idea. How come them and not me is the thing that comes up over and over again because uh, the super spiritual glow in the dark charismatic people who claim to operate in the gifts, they're always paraded on stage and everybody else goes, man, what do I need in order to have my breakthrough so that I can do that too? Uh, yeah, uh, if, if, if you've ever, by the way, felt that way before, yeah, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to like the video and uh, also ring the bell. We're going to head over to Katie Sousa's channel and we're going to note that she gave a, um, a, a recent message on her, on her program, uh, about overcoming idolatry. And this one is just straight up quackery. I mean, that's the only way to describe what we're going to hear in this installment of her program. But we'll also hear her trying to explain why you don't glow in the dark. It's all because of idols and things. Yeah, I, mean, I wish I was making that up. So uh, let me uh, whirl up the desktop. There it is. And let's get that up. Uh, let's let Katie Sousa explain the topic. Like, like I've changed the camera angle, so... I'm looking at her over here, but I'm going to talk to you over there. Just reminding you. So, all right, here's um, here's Katie Sousa. Hi, I'm Katie Sousa, and you're watching Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous. How many of you would like to walk in extraordinary, supernatural, creative miracles? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hang on a second here. i got to do this. I have the power! <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. So you'll note that the whole motivation, you know, for this teaching is is trying to help you have the power. Ha! You know, don't you want to walk in creative miracles like I do? Don't you want to glow in the dark like I do? Uh, well, don't worry. She's she'll she'll teach you how you can glow in the dark too. Um, but this is just all flim flam. And you'll note then here. This plays on human need to be noticed, uh, yeah, and and a need for humans to have power and notoriety and people's attention and stuff. This f feeds off of a form of egoism, if you would. How come they glow in the dark and I don't? I want to glow in the dark too. Yeah, you, you get the idea. So let let me back this up just a smidge so that you can hear again the whole motivation of this teaching. The the hook is. Don't you want to glow in the dark like Katie Sousa? Yeah, I wish I was making Sousa, that Sousa, and you're watching Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous. How many of you would like to walk in extraordinary, supernatural, creative miracles? Ooh, yeah, man, yeah. Why? I, I want to glow in the dark. Do you wonder why some people do and others don't? Yeah, I do. No, actually, I don't because Katie Sousa operates in false signs, False wonders. She's a con woman. Did you know that your thoughts can actually feed demon spirits that are able to block you from moving in these high-level gifts? No. <gasps> demon spirits living in my soul that are blocking me from glowing in the dark? No. <laughs> uh, again, this is playing off of human egocentric motives here and 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 she's she's just wants to help you glow in the dark like she does no actually she doesn't the bible contains keys to enable you to move in what paul calls the extraordinary gifts that distinguish certain christians the bible contains keys to helping me uh, operate in extraordinary gifts where are these keys uh, yeah, if, if how how come I'm not aware of this that the Bible contains keys so that I can operate in higher level gifts? 
You see, this is just false off the bat. Today, I'm going to talk about one of the biggest keys that you can use to unlock the door to the supernatural. Uh, key to unlocking the door of the supernatural. Ooh, I can hardly wait. And when I tell you what it is, you'll be shocked. I gasp. Yes, shocked. Let's go to the conference now. I'm going to talk about a message, and it will seem like, oh, this isn't a faith-filled, glory-filled, exciting message. Oh, my God, what is it? It's a message on idols. And you'll think, oh, my gosh, everybody leave now. This is so Old Testament. Please. But I'm going to apply it to what's happening to us today. So she's going to talk about idols. And apparently this is one of the keys that you need to use to unlock the ability to operate in higher-level supernatural gifts. Feel like I'm being sold a bill of goods here. Because you got to get rid of these things that are in you that are blocking your success and your prosperity and your breakthrough. Amen. So there are demons in me <laughs> blocking my bl breakthrough and prosperity and my ability to glow in the dark. D do you have a tax for that, Katie? Okay, and I'm going to show you how these idols that are in our life are totally affecting us today. It's not an Old Testament message. Oh, yeah, idols, man. They're, by the way, idolatry does affect people today. Um, let me do this. Let me do this. Okay, so let's talk about idolatry for a second, shall we? So we're, uh, we'll just note here, Exodus chapter 20, where we get the Ten Commandments, says this, and, and, and God spoke... All these words saying, I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. No other gods. All right. So we are forbidden to worship anything other than the true God. And so kind of a working definition of an idol. It is that thing to which we turn in times of trouble. That, I, I've heard that as a definition. It's not a bad one because the thing we look to to comfort us, to aid us, to help us escape difficult times, that is our idol. And, and so, you know, that means that an idol can be an actual false god that you worship. An idol can be money. An idol can be, you know, sex or power, you know, n name the normal things in life. An, an idol can even be your favorite video game. Yes, Minecraft can be an idol. Uh, but all of that being said, um, in fact, fiction novels can be an idol. I mean, there, it, uh, there's all kinds of things that can be idols. That being said, idolatry is a breaking of the first commandment. So how do Christians address sins regarding commandment breaking, all right? So we're going to note here, we'll do a little bit of work uh, in, in this, uh, kind of front load it. Here's what uh, the Apostle John writes for us in 1 John. Now, this is the message we have heard from him and we proclaim to you. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship while we walk in darkness, well, we lie and we don't practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us, and watch what it says, from all sin. So if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make God out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. So, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but for also for the sins of the whole world. All right, so how then do we address the sin of idolatry. And believe me when I tell you, you've committed this sin. I've committed this sin. So how do you address, as a Christian, the sin of idolatry? It's real simple. You, you know, go back. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins. So you, you pray something like this. Lord Jesus, I have sinned against you. I have broken the first commandment. I have trusted in this thing or that thing or that God or whatever. 
uh, rather than trusting in you. So please have mercy on me, forgive me, renew me, cast not your Holy Spirit away from me, restore to me the joy of your salvation. All of this I ask in the name of Jesus. You know, this, this is an example of you know a prayer that you can pray. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to, watch what it says, cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. All right? So if idolatry is an issue, confess, repent, be forgiven. Believe that you are forgiven for Christ's sake. He forgives you all of your sins, cleanses you from all unrighteousness. And if Christ has cleansed you from the unrighteousness of idolatry, is there anything left to do? No, (laughs) nothing. If you've been cleansed from all unrighteousness, it doesn't say some, most. uh, He cleanses us from most unrighteousness. No, it says all unrighteousness. So this is how this is is addressed. So you're going to note here, what Katie Sousa is doing is addressing a real sin, but she's spinning details about this real sin. And in fact, she's going to say things that are factually correct, but she's spinning it into a cocktail designed to become the key, the key so that you can glow in the dark like she does. So, uh, yeah, let, but you get the idea. So let's um, let's go back to Katie Sousa. I'll just give you a simple example of the of the dramatic way that these idols are totally affecting our lives today. And I'll give you that example through an employee of mine called John Blake. All right. So she had an she has an employee named John Blake. Got it. John Blake has suffered for many years from all kinds of disorders and diseases. Okay, he got diagnosed with um, excessive ammonia on his brain. Okay, now a little bit of a note. That's a legitimate thing. Um, Sometimes that is associated with, in fact, I think many times that's associated with a liver issue. Okay, so, and it's true, you can have ammonia on the brain. So the, the diagnosis that she's talking about here, that's a real thing. Years ago this happened, when he was having symptoms that appeared to be like Alzheimer's, he would forget things. He would like type and then like stop and not able to remember how to type until he completely forgot how to type. He would watch a movie and at the end of the movie, he wouldn't even remember what the movie was about at all. None of it, like a blank. His wife would have to finish his sentences. He would talk and then he would get stuck. And then his wife would come in and finish his sentences. He would do this thing like uh, it was scary. He would go into a coma-like sleep. Whenever he would come home and take a nap or or come home to go to bed, he would fall in such a deep coma-like sleep that he almost couldn't be awakened. Now, no, this is an anecdotal story being told in the context of how come some Christians have the ability to operate in higher level gifts and other Christians, well, they, they have no power at all. They don't even glow in the dark. So note this anecdotal story is being told in that context while claiming that this is a key so that you can have breakthrough and then operate in these higher level gifts. They had to give him $1,500 a month worth of medication to keep him from slipping into a coma every time he went to sleep. And this is because of this excess ammonia that he had stored in his brain. Now, we all have ammonia in our bodies. It's part of our digestive system and all that. But when we get excess, it affects us in terrible ways, including what you just heard happening to John. Now, that's true. It, this is a legitimate issue with human beings. Yes. So anyway, one time about uh, he'd been working for me for, I don't know, a couple of years probably. And then a friend of ours, who also happened to be volunteering for the ministry, had a dream. And in the dream, she could actually smell ammonia in the dream. So she decided to look it up. And when she looked it up, it, it, it means this. The word ammonia comes from the Greek ammonikos. And it's from the Greek god, or the Egyptian god, among, Because they actually obtained and discovered ammonia uh, near the region of the temple of Ammon in Libya. Now, in, in logical fallacy speak, 
what we're dealing with here is a logical fallacy. It, the, the, the real name is called uh, post hoc ergo propter hoc. Uh, my wife, she's always called it post hoc ergo poppycock. And, <laughs> and so this is, this, is, this is not how you do the, uh, biblical theology. Now, by the way, it's absolutely true that uh, the, the, the word for ammonia has something to do with an ancient uh, with an ancient false deity. In fact, let me see if I can make this bigger. Hang on a second here. Um, I don't know if I can. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Ammonia. There it is. Ammonia. Um, colorless gas with a strong, pungent smell. Yeah, we're all familiar with this. Uh, 1799 coin in scientific Latin in 1782 by Swedish chemist, chemist Torben Bergman as a name for the gas obtained from sal ammoniac, uh, salt deposits containing alu- uh, uh, ammonium chloride found near the temple of Jupiter Ammon from Egyptian god Amon, Amon all right, in Libya. All right, so this is true, factually true, that the, the name ammonia has something to do with the temple of Jupiter Amon from uh, you know the Egyptian god Amon, this is absolutely true. But again, this is what we call the uh, the logical fallacy of post hoc ergo propter hoc. Well, after this, therefore, because of this, you see the because ammonia, well, it, its origin, the name itself comes from Jupiter Amon from the Egyptian god Amon. So. Uh, demons, man, demons. Yeah, we're we're talking about idols and stuff here. Um, can I point something out? And that is, is that if having ammonia on the brain is related to <laughs> idolatry, then uh, we got a problem. And that is, is well, have you considered that Windex sells their formula known as ammonia D? And I'm sure the D in ammonia D and Windex stands for demons. So, so every time you clean your windows. <laughs> with Windex Ammonia D. You're spraying demons on them, man. So you're wondering why there's demonic activity in your house. It could be your window cleaner. <laughs> this is just... So anyway, you, you kind of get the idea. We're, we're way off in the weeds at this point. Um, so let's see where she goes with this. So it's named after the Egyptian god Among. How many... True. That's a factually true statement. Snopes would agree. You know that all idols are demon gods. They're really demon spirits. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> it's that the de- real false gods are demons. Uh, so let me let me give you a text on this one. Um, so Paul in First Corinthians chapter ten. First Corinthians chapter ten. Verse 19 says, uh, what do I imply, that food offered to idols is anything or that an idol is anything? No, I imply that what pagans sacrifice, they offer to demons and not to God. I don't want you to be participants with demons. So so note here, idolatry is a real issue, and Scripture does say that what pagans sacrifice to their false deities, they're actually sacrificing to demons. That. Nothing wrong with saying that. That's true. But now we've got a problem here because uh, Katie Sousa is thinking she's all crime scene investigator, you know, the, you know kind of thing here. And, and so she's sitting there, you know, working the, working the problem here. I've got an employee. He has ammonia on the brain. <gasps> the word ammonia comes from the, 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 the Egyptian god Amon. <gasps> he has ammonia on the brain because demons. Um, can I ask a question? Was your employee, John Blake, worshipping and sacrificing to the Egyptian god Amun? You know, m- maybe. M- maybe there's like a 0.000001 chance, a percent, what, 0.100001% chance that um, the demon <laughs> behind... Jupiter Amon uh, had something to do with the ammonia on the brain. But my question is, what idolatry, how how did he somehow uh, become subject to ammonia on the brain because of a connection to the false god Jupiter Amon? 
this doesn't make any sense. Again, post hoc ergo poppycock. <laughs> After this, therefore, because of this. So uh, yeah, we're 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 like I said in the weeds That's here. What the Bible says people weren't worshiping just statues with stones and gold and silver. They that's true. Was John Blake your employee worshiping a mom? They were worshiping the devil, the demon god or goddess that that statue represented. So when she called me and told me this, I'm like, wow, I wonder if that's what is wrong with John. And so I went to bed that night and I prayed and I had a dream. No, I. Why did I know that that would be the case? I had a dream and in the dream I could smell the smell of ammonia. So I woke up convinced now. Oh, yeah, yeah, because remember, she glows in the dark and you don't, and you want to figure out how to glow in the dark like her. One of the keys here is you got to deal with getting rid of the demons in your soul because of idolatry. So I go to the office. I said, John, I think you have, uh, you're being assaulted by a demon god named Amun. And I told him the whole story and everything else. I said, come to my house today when the rest of the staff comes, and we're going to... Again, was he worshiping this false god and sacrificing to it how does one inadvertently worship the false god amon pray for you so he came over to the house now idols live in the soul where does the bible say that the idols live in the soul it's your soul that wants an idol it's your soul that goes over that money or that house or that shoes. And there's nothing wrong with having money or a house or shoes or boots or stuff that you like. Jesus died to give us an abundant life. He ah, no, whoa. Jesus died to give us an abundant life. That is a sneaky false gospel right there. Let, let, let's, let's take a look at the real gospel real quick. If, you, if anyone ever were to put you on the spot and say, define for me the gospel. Oh, okay. I could do it. All right. And the idea here is, is that the scriptures do not leave the definition of the gospel up to us to figure out. It just lays it out for us clearly. And by the way, this definition of the gospel comes from Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. In fact, let me do this. I'm going to come over here. I guess we're done with that text. Uh, Galatians. Hang on a second here. Galatians. Uh, I just kind of want to go to Galatians itself. And the part that um, I want to look at is um, relating to the gospel that the Apostle Paul preached. All right, let's see here. Let's see. Mm, okay, yes, 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 yes. Okay, here it is. Okay, so Galatians 1.11. Uh, the Apostle Paul writes, and he says, I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. All right. That's a, that, so Paul basically is saying, listen, the, the good news that I preached, I didn't make it up. It's not man's gospel. Jesus himself gave this gospel to me. So what is the gospel that Paul received from Jesus? It's recorded for us in 1 Corinthians 15. And here's what Paul says. I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word that I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered, as of first importance, what I also received. So note here, he, he's saying, I received this gospel. Here's what I received. This is what I delivered to you. And so here's the gospel as given to Paul by Jesus, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and to the twelve. So what's the gospel? Christ died for our sins. Now, taking John 10, uh, where Jesus says, I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly, and turning that into the gospel, Christ died so that we can have an abundant life, is a twisting of the gospel that Jesus gave to the apostle Paul, and technically will become a false gospel. A false gospel cannot save you. In fact, I would remind you that the Apostle Paul says this regarding those who teach a different gospel. 
Uh, Galatians 1, 6 says, I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. So even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be a curse. That means anathema damned. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be damned, accursed. So Katie Sousa here is teaching a different gospel. It's subtle, it's bad, but all of this, show, you know, she's not qualified to be a preacher in Christ's church anyway. Uh, and so we're just kind of pointing out all the different ways in which she's messing things up, this being one of them. So we continue then. He died so we could be safe and we would be blessed and we could be walking in the prosperity of, of his victory at the cross and the resurrection. Walking in prosperity and his victory, that's not the gospel. That's a different gospel. Amen. But there's a difference between you being blessed and walking in prosperity and walking in abundance and lusting after something. The Bible says that the Israelites lusted after their idols and it distracted them and detracted them for their love of the one true God. Now, again, idolatry is a real sin. Real Christians commit the sin of idolatry. They break the first commandment. This is for sure a real thing. Again, the solution is what? Confess your sin. Be forgiven by Christ. Trust in him. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. This is the solution of Scripture. But she's now talking about idolatry being the thing that's blocking you from prosperity and operating in signs and wonders like she does. So there's many times that we have lust in our hearts for these idols. How do you know if you have lust? Think about it. You are always thinking about that thing and planning and plotting ways to get it, even if it means hiding money from your husband. Nobody laughed because it's true. I heard somebody laugh. Am I right? Raise your hand if you caught yourself ever lusting after something, thinking about it all the time. Oh, there's two people that raised their hand. The rest of you are... Again, she's describing idolatry. The solution is repent and be forgiven. Are healed? You can go now. God told me this message was for this place. I nah, see, God told me. See, she's the glow in the dark. She hears directly from God. I don't speak until I hear what I'm supposed to speak about. I oh, yeah. So, so this is exactly what God wanted her to say. Really? God wanted you to say that the reason why people have ammonia on the brain is because of idolatry related to Jupiter Amon. Idols live in your soul, though. They're controlling the soul. Idols drive. The Where in the scripture to say idols live in the soul? That would mean demons are inside of me, but I'm a Christian. I am filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit doesn't share his temple with demons. These spirits, they drive the soul to be hungry and to pursue these idol, idolatrous things in their life. Sometimes we don't, even, we don't even have it in our life, but we were born with it because those kinds of things get passed down from the generations. That's what I think happened to John Blake. So he came over to the house that day. and I So again, what, what idolatry was he committing exactly? How did he worship Jupiter Amon? I prayed for his soul to be healed. That's how I combated the spirit. Oh, she, she prayed that his soul would be healed. And flammo, blammo, Jupiter Amon fled screaming. What? I prayed for his soul to be healed. I just put my hand on him and soaked him for like an hour while we all worshipped. <laughs> you soaked him for an hour and what? And when he got up, the first thing he noticed was that his mind was clearer than it had been. Anecdotal story. Since how long? Years clear and he looked at me and said I, I wow i feel a lot clearer i'm like great that's awesome so then he goes home he gets in the shower and his whole life when he would so again notice all the theologies in the tall tale now idol idolatry is real um uh the the name of ammonia it really has something to do with the false god jupiter amon or the egyptian god amon it this is most certainly true but <laughs> This has nothing to do with you learning how to glow in the dark like Katie Sousa claims that she can do. So this is she's spinning real facts into a false narrative 
and, and a false key, a, a teaching that's not found in the Bible. Shower, he would smell a strong smell of ammonia coming off of his body. At first, he thought it was just normal. He thought everybody smelled like that. But then, then the doctors told him, no, that's, a, that's the excessive ammonia that's being stored in your body that you're, that you're smelling. So he went and got into the shower, and guess what? He didn't smell any ammonia. So now he's starting to get convinced. He goes the next day, and you know, he's clear. He's thinking right. He's remembering things. He's finishing his sentences. So he decides to go to not one but three of his doctors, three doctors independent from each other, to have all three of them. T- I'd like to see those uh, medical records. Test his ammonia levels, and for the first time in years, all the tests came back, ammonia level, normal. Woo! Yeah, this is just a tall tale. No, she hasn't provided any of the medical records. Just claim that they're there. Uh Uh-huh. But this whole story itself is completely absurd on its face and is not the way in which the Bible teaches us to deal with the sin of idolatry. That's just one example of how these things are attacking us today. You've got to understand something. If you've made something into an idol in your life, that demon is going to attack you. And it can attack your money. It can attack your body. It can attack your family. It can attack your marriage. That's why it's so important that when we catch ourselves lusting after these things. Okay, I need to make a distinction here. Money is not a demonic thing. Money is neither... Is neither um, evil nor good it's a tool the creation of a graven image for the purpose of bowing down and worshiping it you know you know think of uh, the ancient gods like molech shira baal uh you know so create you know creating a deity like that for the purpose of bowing down and worshiping it th- that is th- that is a direct defiant act against God period. And the demonic is behind that. But the, the, if you worship Minecraft, that does not mean that there's a Minecraft demon. Minecraft can actually be enjoyed as a video game without committing the sin of idolatry. It's also possible to commit the sin of idolatry by basically turning Minecraft into the thing that your mind completely obsesses on and the thing for which you look for good in your life. Uh, So this is just so sloppy, but she's not trying to be precise in what, what the Bible teaches. She's spinning her yarns in order to make people depend on her, the woman who glows in the dark, so that they, by applying what she's saying, which is not biblical, they can have their breakthrough and glow in the dark like she does. Things, we have to stop ourselves. We have to get healing for our souls because if we don't, the demonic realm is going to wreak havoc in your life just like it did for John Blake. So you got to get healing in your soul. No, she didn't say repent, be forgiven, trust Christ and what he's done for us by bleeding and dying for our sins on the cross you would not believe the stuff that demons these these idols are able to do to you i mean just listen to this one example psalm 135 verse 16 says idols has mal have mouths but they (laughs) (laughs) no she just did not do that she did it okay Oh, this is so bad. Okay, and and the sad part, the worst part, is there are a lot of people who believe Katie Sousa is legit. She is a holy woman of God, and and she's a Christian sis- sister. No, she's not. She really isn't. So let's take a look at Psalm one thirty five sixteen. Oh, this is absurd. Okay, <laughs> so oh man, Psalm one thirty five and verses. Um, Okay, so let's see here. Uh, Psalm 135, 15 and 16. The idols of the nations, the idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak. They have eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear nor is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them become like them. 
so do all who trust in them. All right, so there's your text. So think of it this way. If you were to imagine in your mind a picture of, you know, of what does a statue of Baal look like, you know, or pick one of the, you know, world religions today that, you know, you know, that worship graven images. All right. So what does it look like? Now, although they, these false, the, these images have eyes, have ears, they can neither see nor hear. They are, they're, they're not real. They are stupid. They are unintelligent. They are not a living. They don't breathe, although they look like they're alive. So the point is, is that this is idolatry makes you stupid is kind of a good way of putting it. That's kind of the point of this text. So let's see what Katie Seuss is going to do with this, because this is just abysmal. Speak not eyes, but they see not. Revelations 920 says that idols that are of silver, Silver, bronze, stone, and wood cannot see, hear, or walk. So idols make you deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. <laughs> I, I hear the Price is Right music. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you for playing, Katie. We have some lovely parting gifts for you. Um, <laughs> so are you suffering from blindness? It's because idolatry. Uh-huh. <laughs> are you unable to hear are you having problems with your hearing it's not you don't need a hearing aid you need to repent of idolatry <sighs> this is unbelievable physically deaf dumb blind and crippled they can cause problems with your eyesight in the natural problems with your hearing in the natural problems with your walking that's not the point of these texts, either Revelation or Psalm 135. In the natural. You you know, cause crippling diseases on your bodies. I've seen it over and over again. Oh, she's seen it, man. She's seen it. She's again. Seen it. I'll show you an example of it right now. Let's play Gunther, please. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, this is a personal ter- testimony of some guy claiming that he received healing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fast forward through Gunther's testimony because um, Gunther still looks like he's got major medical issues, although he claims that he's been completely healed, which is another strange thing about the charismatic movement. People who uh, claim to have been healed from things still seem to be suffering from them. So, uh, yeah, I'm just fast forwarding here. And when we get to the end of it, she's going to draw her theological conclusions from this. So let, let, let's see what she says regarding Gunther. <laughs> Now, you may say, what is that to, to do with idols? Now, that man never mentioned he had any idolatry in his life. Now, okay, so Gunther gave a healing testimony and never once mentioned that he was healed of an idol, a demon idol in his soul. But uh, don't worry, Katie Sousa is going to tie it into her teaching life. here. But I think he had something in his bloodline that he didn't know about that caused this mysterious disease that they couldn't figure out, caused his bones to look like spider webs. Okay, and the reason why I think that he got healed of the idol, because in the same meeting, I had three people come up to me and report that when they got delivered of something during the activation, that they had to turn around and run to the bathroom. And when they did, strong smell of ammonia came out. So this guy claimed that he was healed, had not, his healing had nothing to do with idolatry, but she says it has something to do with idolatry. Why? Well, because it was probably an undetectable result of idolatry uh, from a bloodline curse. Uh, and how do we know? Well, because three people during the activation went to the bathroom and said they smelled the smell of ammonia. May I point this out, that ammonia is a common chemical used to clean bathrooms. And um, <laughs> I'm just saying. So um, <laughs> this is just, this is wingnut wackerdoodleism, and this is just quackery. You know, this woman isn't helping anybody except for herself, and she's not teaching any biblical key so that you can glow in the dark too. So, I mean, this is just insane. 
Ooh, wow. They went in the bathroom and smelled ammonia. Did they look in the mirror and like say Bloody Mary three times? Amen. I mean, let me pl- play this again because here's the thing. I mean, th- she said she gave this delivery like as if this is a ghost story. And when they did, strong smell of ammonia came out. And then when she opened her door, on on her on her pull thing on her door, man, there was a hook. Yeah. Amen. Look, what does it say? In the Bible, that idols cannot see, they cannot hear, they cannot walk, they cannot talk. If you're having issues being able to walk, crippling diseases, and, or something with your eyes, or something with your ears, something with your mouth, or stuttering, the, stuttering speech, it may be because there's an idol in your life or in your bloodline. No, that's not what this text is saying. Oh, this is so just ridiculously absurd bad. See, this is just, I'm just trying to show you that this isn't an Old Testament message. These idols are alive and well, and they're attacking you. They're assaulting you today. (laughs) So, yeah, there there you go. Um, No way to fix this. So Katie Sousa is, she's not qualified to teach anywhere. And what she just taught there is not a biblical message. She didn't teach anybody real biblical keys to nothing. I mean, it was just falsity is the best way I can put it. So if you found this helpful, you know, all the information on how you can share the video, it's down below in the description, as well as all the information on how you can support Fighting for the Faith financially. If you don't already do so, we depend upon the people we serve, and that's you, to be able to continue to bring, you know, this type of discernment work and teaching so that you can be protected from false teachers, false prophets, false apostles, and wingnut wackerdoodles like Katie Sousa and others. And so if you find this to be a benefit to you and you're, you're learning how to properly understand the Bible and learning sound doctrine, then please consider supporting us because we truly cannot do what we are doing without your support. And in the month of February, everybody who uh, joins our crew at Gunner's Mate or above in the month of February, I'll send you a, a signed uh, you know, copy of my fine art print, San Clemente Dreamin, as my way of saying thank you, to, you know, for supporting us. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen.